Hey everyone, it's Jason here with a new update for Fire Jumpers Inferno. So I'm going to take you on a, uh, a sidebar journey here of how I create maps. Uh, so you get to see a little bit about how I uh, go through the editor and through where I pull the information. So uh, let me show you what I've got so far. Um, what I'm doing is I want to create more than just California. So I set it up to expand the map but I have to unfortunately recreate everything. So I'm building it from scratch again, but here it is. So I've got nearly the entire West Coast of the United States. So this is California, this is uh, San Francisco right here. Uh, I think California goes up to roughly about here-ish. Then I believe this goes into some Oregon and then over here, I believe it's Washington. So, uh, so I wanted to, uh, show you a little bit about how I process this data. All right, so I'm going to try to connect this last part of the map. All right, now if you remember, uh, each one of these pixels is about three and a half kilometers in size, three and a half by three and a half kilometers. And inside of that, each inside of each one of these pixels, these three and a half kilometers, is 122 by 122 pixels and each one of those is 30 meters so i have to process a lot of data here so let's go into here this is where i get my data it's all uh open to the public and we're free to do with what we like so uh wonderful website tons of data and i'm going to show you a little bit about how i take this data and process so it's just going to take a moment here for the vegetation uh, type to show up. Here we go. And you can see, see all these little pixels. And if I zoom in, it gets even more and more detailed. Okay. And this, as you can see, this is very similar to my game. Now this is a bit at, a, at an angle. So it's kind of interesting when I download the data that uh, I'm pulling some kind of a parallelogram worth of data. Anyway, let's pull it out here and come back. And we've go all the way zoomed out. You can see the entire US. Uh, wouldn't it be neat if I mapped it all out? But uh, for now, I think I will be able to get quite a bit. If you saw this, I'm hoping to get roughly this area mapped out maybe maybe not that much maybe just part of it anyway we'll see uh so let's come down here and we're just going to remove the vegetation layer here just so i can see a little bit more clearly then i'm going to come to the download area and i'm going to add this to one degree so it kind of adds a grid so it helps me with the download. So uh, I've already got the vegetation here for the download. This is uh, last year's data, which is great. Uh, now this is the fuel code. We get all kinds of information here, uh, but I just use the one layer here, which is this one, which is a fire behavior fuel model. Um, and it has 40 different fuel codes. So I use this. And I scroll all the way down, and I need the elevation. Uh, so let's add this. OK. Now, once I get those three layers selected, I click on this little tool to be able to kind of select an area that I want to download. Uh, all right, now if I take a look at my game, let's kind of take a look here. All right, so we have here, kind of curves in a little bit. And then this has these different lakes and edges here. So let's take a look back. Right. So that's those little areas here. So I would say I'd want to grab roughly this area. Now I can't go too big. That's too, that's way too small. So I can go bigger than that. I can go up to about 12 megabytes. Uh, on a layer here. So maybe this one? Five. Let's 
see here. Ah, that's close enough. All right, so let me just download this. These three. I kind of look at this number. I can go up to about 12, but I'm making it a little bit smaller just so uh, the video is, is can just be a little bit shorter uh, instead of waiting for a very long processing. All right, so now this is downloading. So let me just kind of prepare some of these files. So I'm going to delete this. Oh, yeah, here's my QGIS. I'm going to delete that. All right. Now QGIS is uh, this open source software to uh, handle GIS uh, data. So once we get the GIS data from Landfire, I'll be able to import it into this application here. All right, well, let me just pause this and come back to it. All right, so uh, then I am going to save each one of these zip files that I get from Landfire. Once I get them, now I've got these three zip files. So what I do is I go into here. The EVT uh, means that's the vegetation layer. So I grab this folder and this file. Drag it out, and then I do the same thing for this one, but I don't need the output parameters. I just need it once, and this is the digital elevation model. So vegetation, fuel codes, elevation. Grab those three, add that to QGIS. So now I've got this here. Now, to, before I go and I process all this, I do have this way to kind of verify. So I'm just going to grab this, replace this file. This then allows me to, within the game, verify source. Oh, see, you know what? Wasn't quite right. I would have missed it by about one, one strip here. All right, so let me go back to this and download again. So it was high enough here but it wasn't low enough so go here maybe include that that should do I think nine yeah let's try that all right so I'm just gonna pause it again wait until it downloads see how it goes all right so I think these files are nearly ready there we go. Save that. Save that. And so Landfire sends me three zip files that I can use for each one of the layers. Vegetation. Here's the, here we go, Gottbergen. All right. And then the elevation. Go to the folder. And this part is pretty simple. Just grab this folder and this file. I just go into each one. Don't need this file each time. I just need it once. It's all the same. And there we go. So now I got the vegetation, the fuel codes, the elevation. Grab those three layers. Go into QGIS. Throw that in. And uh, oh, again, let's just test the output here. So replace that. Okay, so this is where we kind of hit and miss the mark here. So let me just kind of refresh here. Verify source there, much better. All right, so this will be the new area. So, okay, so I can just turn this off and let me process this data. All right, convert, translate, DEM. I've got the three layers here. So I'm gonna start with the elevation. So I'm gonna save it to file. So what I'm doing is I'm converting all of that data into a text file and I'm just going to call it DEM for digital elevation model. I'm going to run that. Now this shows in the, the number of pixels uh, and each pixel is 30 meters. All right, so multiply that 
uh, by 30, and you've got the number of total meters uh, per edge here. So now I'm going to turn this one, I'm going to turn that one into the fire layer. I'm going to run that. Um, and if I take a look at this data, okay, 208 megs. Let me just start the last one here. All right, here we go. So let me just load this into a, a notepad or oh, that could work. The old uh, load one, last one, the old one. All right, so this is the longitude and latitude, all right, of the coordinate. And when it's a negative, that means it's uh, off the map. So it's, uh, they don't actually have the data of what I downloaded. Um, but further down, if I scroll, we'll see uh, different other types of numbers, which uh, shows um, the elevation in meters for that coordinate. All right, anyway, so I take this data, just process everything. So I'm gonna close this. I don't need this anymore. Come here, I delete all of the old data, which is what I had from before. When I was doing the previous save, Turn this into a text file. And I press tab. Oh, it's a bit loud. And okay. I had one more file uh, which I already had, but I will grab that and put that in here. Okay. So now uh, Unity is going to absorb those new text files. And what is that? That is, uh, what, 600 megs of data that I'm going to process here. All right. Log in. <clears throat> All right, again, here's the entire area. And just to verify the source again, it will add all of these. Now I do have some overlapping, so you know there's a little bit of extra data that I didn't have to process, but it's a little bit difficult to choose the exact area. And yeah, and then I'm going to click on parse. This does take uh, a while uh, to process. Um, but uh, just while that is beginning, uh, what is happening is uh, it is going to go through and download all three of those text files and sequentially go through line by line uh, every single pixel in that area and it will begin to uh, process it. Here we go. So you can see here, so I've got 3,279 uh, columns that's going through. So it's processing all of this here. So you can see it's taking a little while. Um, so let me just pause that for a second because once it's done processing, uh, then the next part is saving this data. So now imagine every one of these pixels, okay, is the uh, size of about three and a half by three and a half kilometers. So uh, what it does during the saving process is that it takes that entire area and figures out what's the average or uh, what is the most popular terrain type in this whole 122 by 122 pixel area, which is the three and a half kilometers takes that most popular terrain, gives it back, and oh, here we go. And now we get to see each one, each one of these is being saved, and each one of these will be able to um, uh, download as a downloadable content, right? Um, so a lot of information is getting processed, but it is kind of nice to finally see the 
data coming together. Now, when it first uh, adds this data, uh, it does not add the elevation. It's just painting where the new tiles are going to be. Uh, and this 575 that you see here, I'm adding 575 pixels or tiny little downloadable content. 575. So imagine 575 for just this area and the scale of what I want to accomplish here. All right, so this will be, this will take a while. This will take a few weeks. Um, I do have a helper, uh, Malcolm, which is gonna be great to have him uh, help me with all these maps. All right, so once everything is processed, uh, I save, save that map data. Now, when I reload the map, Still didn't quite add the elevation, so let me. Oh, actually, I think it did. All right, but I find sometimes it's a little bit easier to kind of restart because because I, I process so much information that it kind of overloads some memory and does some some weird things. Uh, but I believe that it's the very end here, and uh, let's let's load an area. Let's take a look. Let's see what it does. All right, oh, oh, brand new data, never seen before. Wow, what, what is going on here? Wow, very cool. All right, uh, that is how I create maps. And again. Uh, just for those uh, who are not familiar, um, I can, each one of these pixels, again, let me just make the map size one. Every one of these pixels is a downloadable content, right? And this is one, one tile, right? So when I create these large maps, I'm actually just adding all of the tiles together. Um, and so the idea is that I wanted to try to create these to be very, very modular so that later I could be at this scale map, have you know a five by five tile kind of area. And then uh, as you drag the map, it's loading new areas dynamically. I think that would be great. But uh, it's something I'm gonna add down the road, not something I'm gonna add. Voila, here we go. The entire west coast of the United States accomplished just now. All right. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, see you in the next video. Later.